Okay, my outstanding, intelligent, open-minded friends. We are going to discuss Geology Rocks, this guy, I believe his name is Paul, and his interpretation of my claims. Now, he is a PhD geologist. He's, uh, he, he works in the industry and has some very stern advice for me that I am just totally out of my mind, basically. And he's spouting off formulas as to why blood won't pump up to some, you know, all kinds of crazy things. Of, of these laws, he's calling them, that I am violating and so forth. I am presenting evidence that I would like to him to address the evidence and not, you know, the, the way he addresses, I'll show you the, the, the claims, counterclaims he's making against my claims. He's just saying, no, nope, you're wrong because it's just not right. And nope, you're wrong because there's some law that says this can't happen. And nope, you're wrong. No, I have the evidence. I have the specimens. I have the DNA. I have the casket all ignored by our geologist friend who claims to be, you know, kind of a, I call him a hot shot. He says, well, I never claimed to be a hot shot. Well, to me, if you're making these claims and saying you're working for the petroleum industry and you know all about this stuff, well, I, I, I call you a hot shot. And all you're doing is, um, you're doing a fine job, Paul. You're just mouthing off the same things that somebody told you to say. And then you say, well, we know everything. All the other geologists are against you, Roger. Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> I'm right and you're all wrong. Right? You got that, Paul? You, my friend, are wrong. So wrong is incredible. And your friends, all your other biologists and geologist friends, they couldn't care less about truth. That's the issue. It's not whether you're right or wrong. It's whether you're willing to lie and defraud people to try to maintain your status and position and, and, you know, I mean, I understand it's got to be very unpleasant position for you to be in. You spent your whole life doing this and you thought you were really on top of the game and just, you know, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be nasty, but you wasted your life, Paul, doing this stuff. And you could have 10 years ago signed on to reality and you chose not to. So anyway, we'll, let's get into some reality and I will show you the things that he claims against my evidence right all he ever does is make silly claims and i'll show you they're just ridiculously silly and for a guy that has a phd and geologist and i work in a field and i know all this stuff well address my evidence don't spit back things to me that you were told to say and show me slime that comes off of your drilling hit heads it's meaningless stuff you're showing, Paul. I'm showing actual physical evidence. So let's get to the physical evidence. And the stuff I've been discovering lately is just absolutely spectacularly stunning. Stunning. Okay, my friends. I'm just going to blurt right into it. Now, I noticed this nine years ago. And I have been posting about it at least almost daily since then, this giant dragon, Typhon, in the desert in Morocco. And I was led to this by a message. And I'll explain to you that later. But this is Typhon, and here's his head. He is a dragon, and he was recorded in Apollodorus, and Ovid, and Hesiod, and all of them. And here he is, spitting all this stuff out at a gigantic fish below which was a god to turn themselves into a fish. This dragon's throat runs all the way down here. You see the scales? This is the dragon's throat. These are the scales. All this stuff is just runoff from a dead, decaying dragon. These are all scales, all scales, all scales, all the way down. You see them? Those aren't hills and valleys and mountains. That's scales of a dragon. All the way down until his throat got cut by Zeus with his great and mighty sword. It, all written about, all written about in the ancient texts. And he is on the map. 
the, the Atlas Catalan from 1375. They knew about him. They show his cut here, run all the way across North Africa. There's his body, there's his legs, the thighs of a human, and this is all he's written about. He poops right out of here. That's why it's so fertile right there. That's where he poops, and that's where the urine comes down. He is a reptilian, same thing as a uh, avian. They have that same kind of digestive system. His tail runs all the way out, all the way out, all the way out. And we can see it very clearly right down here somewhere. You see it? See it? Scales? And you see this stuff here? Why do you think that's there? That's the blood running out. That's transition metals in the blood. It's just draining out. There's a little swale there. And his tail runs all the way out to here. That's the end of the tip of his tail. And it's exactly how he's portrayed on the ancient map. And he's attacking this fish right here. All right, this is a giant fish. And that is a giant fish. And that stuff ate through that fish's back. And I show this over and over and over because you can see all the blood vessels. Now, you have a doctor look at that. And if they don't understand what they're seeing, get another doctor. This right here is arteries. These right here are the blood vessels, arterioles. They come down to what they call the capillaries. They pinch off at the ca capillaries and dump their contents into the veins, which are black. And at the same time, they drop their fluids into this, which is the lymphatic system. Nobody can see this like I can. This is better than having the top end microscopic microscopes. They could never see this. And what's bleeding off here is the veins are extremely porous. They're extremely porous. And all of these fluids just dump into the vein and it sucks it back up and out through the, you know, out through the heart to be, get it all cleaned up. So that's, that's body tissue. There is absolutely zero question of that. This is spitting out from his his face here, which is absolutely zero question of that. And it is nasty, nasty, nasty. Absolutely zero question of that. You don't see this stuff laying around your house, I'm sure. Alright, that's come down, right down, straight down, to try to kill the fish. And it just attack them. And I can show you how the lymphatic system works, and these are the lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes themselves have been attacked and are being destroyed by that noxic stuff. And this is what's coming into it, and that lymph node should have been able to filter it out. can't filter it out. It's too much. And these have the webbing. You see the webbing up here? That's basically like the, the um, lymph, but it's more of a, of a filter, I think. But that, that's supposed to keep all the really worse stuff out from getting in. But in this case, there was just way too much of this noxious fluid. And it came right down from here, right into it. See it running run right down? That's where the green stuff is invading. It, send it, all, it sent all that fluid up there. And there must be some, something in the body that says, hey, go up there, there's a whole batch of it. Because otherwise, it wouldn't flow like that, I don't think. And it actually flowed into straight tubes instead of being all webby like, like normal. It, see, look, watch the tubes. They run in, almost straight now. You see them? Normally that would be like this. It would be all tangled up and, and like that. Now it's something has directed it to go up and grab all of that noxious green stuff and bring it in a, in a line, just come over here and grab it. And it comes up and grabs it. And it running, brings it over here, like, like rivers of it, running in to the lymph nodes and it killed them all. Killed this one, killed that one, killed, killed, killed. They're all, and they're all exactly the same. They all have that webbing. You have Google Earth. Come up here and look at this and see if you can deny what I'm showing you. And look at this throat. Look at everything. Look at the guts. Look at the coils. The coils come way out to here. And that is not, that is not um, sand dunes. That is skin. That's hide. And they, they said he had the, the coils of a viper. And that is the hide of 
some kind of an animal. All right? If you go to somebody that knows how to do tanning and you showed them this picture and said, what is that? They would say, that's some kind of leather, probably ostrich or something. And that's what this was. Supposedly he had coils of a viper that went all the way around here, all the way up to his, around his whole body. And they hissed and sizzled and all this stuff. So, this is reality, my friends. I know it's a difficult reality, but it is reality. And you want to live just being a, a damn fool? Because you, your mind can't accept reality? I don't. I'm done with, with worrying about what people think of you because you think of reality. All right, and the worst ones are the PhDs. They, they, I call them, I call it PhDolia. They cannot see what's in front of their face. They say, oh, you're seeing things that aren't there. No, I'm saying you can't see the things that are there. And that's, that's just completely, totally, 100% obvious now. Surge and diabetes, yes, because you're missing the bacteria in your body. Okay, let's take count one. Count one says, your evidence that you consistently claim proves your claims. Does it? Let's find out. Well, let's find out, Paul. CAT scan. When I saw your cats show the CAT scan, you showed a CAT scan of a rock. No surprise there. You can claim that the surface of the rock is veins and arteries, but that is all it is your claims. Well, it was DNA tested, and it was also looked at by an anatomist who claims, yes, that is a human finger look and tip. It has all the, the um, anatomy of a human finger. And it was CAT scan, and it was DNA tested. So those are my claims, yes. So let me show those claims. Then he goes on about my DNA test. This is the amusing one, and very easy to prove it is contamination. He proved it. Yep, it's done. It's proven. You say at least one of the samples is 36 fingertip. Now, then he goes into some kind of law about sizes and square cubes and all this stuff. And 500 foot tall giant. That's nothing. That's, that's tiny. He's, he's thinking 500 feet is a big giant. Anyway, so anyway, this is his claims and I am going to refute them today. And then we're going to get into some excellent, excellent um, microscopic work. I got a ton of stuff to go put in a microscope. And uh, the Spurlock is absolutely validated now, no question whatsoever. It is a new body part and it is on all of my, my mud fossils, which are exceptionally preserved body parts. They're better than autopsy body parts. Okay, my friends, this is going to get so long today if I keep doing this, but all of this stuff has to be explained. All of the things that I'm showing, that I'm explaining, I want somebody else to speak to me about this. I'm showing that light, totally different than what we thought. Light can accelerate. Opals, they're made out of silicates and, and blood, literally. All of these things are, are biological that are on the earth. They're not just something sticking out of here that nobody can explain. Same thing with these. These are tendons and membranes. All this stuff I have shown over and over and over. And people are just not capable of allowing their mind to accept what is, is it cannot be denied. It cannot be denied. So, all I can say is it's a whole new world. We have a whole new physics, we have a whole new history, we have a whole new basically chemistry, biology, totally different than what they thought. Enzymes are the key to everything and enzymes are only produced by bacteria and bacteria are the key to health. Not necessarily to hurt you, some will absolutely, but the ones that are there to help you, if you don't have them, you're in trouble. So there's a lot of things need to be discussed and, and understood that are just being pushed under the carpet. And that, that's the kind of things you get from a people like Paul. They, 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 they hit you with all this stuff like the denialists. They're denialists. They're not scientists. They're denialists. 
Okay, this is from Historical Spark. And this is all about dragons. This is called The Origins and Myth of the Oldest Dragon of European Mythologies. Now, this is European. And they were everywhere around the world. So let's hear it. Listen to what he has to say. Listen. Echoed through the annals of history. These dragons were painted as creatures of beauty and terror, their scales glinting in the light, their eyes glowing with a fierce intelligence. They were more than mere beasts, they were representations of the fears and hopes of an entire age. As Europe moved into the Renaissance, the dragon legends continued to evolve, reflecting changes in thought and culture. The dragons of this era were often depicted in more elaborate and fantastical forms, their roles and stories becoming more complex and nuanced. All right, this is where it gets to be a point of, I know they didn't know anything about this, or, well, maybe they did. Maybe they were still around, but very small at this point in time. But at one point, they were just so enormous that, uh, you know, and they had stories of seeing them in the skies, battling, in, literally battling in the skies, gigantic creatures. And that's what was written. And everybody just laughed at it, and they said, oh, that's why, that's why they make these constellations look like this or that. No. I think they saw actual creatures battling in the skies, some of them quite likely dragons. They remain symbols of great power and mystery, embodying the wonder and curiosity of a world in transition. Throughout the centuries, the myths of European dragons have continued to captivate and inspire. They are a testament to the enduring power of storytelling and the timeless allure of these magnificent creatures. The stories of dragons are not just echoes of the past, but living legends that continue to stir the imagination and touch the heart, reminding us of a world where the boundaries between the real and the mythical were blurred by the fires of legend and lore. Well, let's see how he's going to interpret that blurring, because they just forgot the reality of this insanity. In the shadowed corners of ancient Europe, where the echoes of bygone eras still linger, dragons were not merely creatures of legend, but were woven into the very fabric of human imagination. From the earliest days, stories of dragons stirred the hearts of those who dared to dream of these magnificent and terrifying beings. These ancient tales were like fire in the dark, illuminating a world filled with wonder and fear. One of the earliest mentions of dragons in European lore can be traced back to the ancient Greeks and Romans. In the rich tapestry of Greek mythology, dragons appeared as both protectors and adversaries. The myth of the Python, a serpent-like dragon that guarded the oracle of Delphi, captivated the imaginations of many. This dragon was more than a mere beast, it was a guardian of sacred knowledge, a symbol of the divine mysteries hidden beneath the earth. The story of Apollo's conquest of Python was not just a tale of triumph, but a vivid portrayal of the struggle between light and darkness, knowledge and ignorance. Roman mythology carried forward these dragon legends with its own unique twist. The draconian figures in Roman tales were often tied to imperial power and destiny. One of the most enduring images was the dragon entwined with the fate of Rome itself. The dragon became a symbol of the empire's strength and the ultimate challenge to be faced. You know, here's the problem. I have to believe that there was, I mean, I know there was dragons here. Typhon was a dragon, there's absolutely no question. Quetzalcoatl was here, absolutely no question. Scorpzilla, no question. So I know these, and this is nothing, that's just a puppy, that's a tick. These other ones are very, very much bigger. So. Could this likely have been in the recent past? I say possibly. Where is the evidence? I don't know. My evidence is in the earlier days during the, the, the Triassic era Great Flood, which was not millions and millions of years ago. It was only, according to Velikovsky, which I go with his research now, 3,700 years ago approximately, about 1500 BC. And Venus almost hit Earth, caused a salacious ooze to come up all over, huge flood all over the Earth, and created mud fossils. And that, it, Yale agrees with it, it perfectly preserved um, fossils 
due to silica rich oceans and they says they're an anomaly it never happens the reason is silica is heavy it sinks to the bottom of the ocean it came up to the top of the ocean when the ocean flipped and did the whole earth with water and that was um, and of course it impacted the the uh, atmosphere and condensed everything in the atmosphere and, and literally caused it to come down as as rain but it didn't come down as as nice cool rain it came down as boiling hot water because of the impact and the heat and it actually boiled they claimed the oceans now i don't know if that's true but it certainly claimed basins and things like this here and that's where i am in the connecticut valley river basin and the stuff here the, my stuff is f fabulous because of the specific area i'm in i'm in like a, a cooking bowl <laughs> and all my stuff cooked all of the flesh off it and then kept the body parts you know, this is actually kind of fascinating. They, they, they're they talking about a lot of historical documents talking about recent, you know, involvement with dragons and armies and so forth. And the Romans and the Greeks and all that coming all, even on down into the Middle Ages. Now, I don't know how big they were. These are tiny little things compared to the ones I show. But they're still dragons. And I would, I would assume that's a good possibility. And then they could have been wiped out. If you've got enough guys and enough spears, I mean, you can hit them about a thousand times and it's all over. Uh, and I'm sure they threw these guys at them if they were terrorizing villages and so forth. And that's what they talked about. They would come in and terrorize villages. And, and they were, you know, pretty fearsome. <laughs> Let's see this. I'm just doing the dragons and all this. SciTech Daily News, paleontological surprise. New research indicates T. rex was much larger than previously thought. Yes, I would say much. <laughs>